Good morning, champions. So let's get quickly started with the full stack web application development using GSP. And today part is going to be about login. So we are going to take login module uh, today. So recently we had some problems with uh, uh, the alignment yesterday. You can see that alignment is not good. Uh, so let me have a look at what we were doing yesterday and what we had to do and what we need to do today uh, so that we get the alignment right, right? So let's get quickly started and go back to login.jsp and we can clearly see that register article has two aside. So what we need to do, we need to go to register article and we need to tell register article, right? And I have to go to this div register article and say hash register article and what you got to do is you got to keep the indentation right. So I'll use uh, the indentation uh, which is the box indentation. So I'll say you got to keep your orientation as horizontal and display yourself as WebKit box, right? All right. So now I'm using horizontal indentation of article, register article, which is the main parent container. You can see this article is the main parent container of both the sides, right? So since I have done it, now what I will do, I'll go to my, uh, the, I'll go to my register article left and right, and I'll both, I'll tell them not to float, right? Because now I have set the indentation to, you can see that register article, just I'll copy and keep them aligned. Okay, here. So register article, now if you can see, right here, right? And now when you see register article right here, so it is displayed as a box and the orientation inside the register box which is left aside and right aside is going to take horizontal. So let me save and you can see now they are horizontally assigned and aligned to each other, right? Now what I do right here, I will uh, just go to left aside and say, that, hey, you got to be 30%, right? Or maybe you got to be 20%. Right, so now 20% looks good since it has occupied the image. So background red is not required. I'll get rid of the background red. And now I want this to be flexible, all right? Uh, so I will use the flexible property to this right aside. So I'll say dash webkit dash, right? So I can say box dash, or we can use many many uh, properties like we are having uh, dash webkit dash flex flex we have already used box flex so I'll say dash box dash flex is equal to one so we can use this property uh, webkit box flex one now we can see the moment we said flexible it has taken the entire available area so since it's taken entire available area uh, what I got to do, I will just give padding of 10 pixels here. All right, so now the padding is also taken. And let me give a, this a bit of height also. So this is a register article. I will say minimum height is going to be, let's say about 300 pixels, right? All right, so now 300 pixels height is taken. So I will just... Tell this image, hey image, why don't you come in between somewhere like here, all right? So I will say margin top 30 pixels. Now image takes margin top 30 pixels or maybe height is too much. I'll go to my register article and I'll say, I want your height to be 250 pixels and I don't want it to be green as well, all right? So right aside will not be green right so this is without floating we have been able now one is fixed another is flexible right we can clearly see all right so it's not going to be uh, you know responsive up to the mobile extent but yeah it's going to fit in almost all the desktop and laptop resolutions that's what I mean all right so let me quickly go here and say hey now what I want here is something uh, like this uh, right I'll say I want a paragraph in here right and I want that paragraph to be styled so I'll say that I am having left aside so this is my left aside due and inside this left aside we are having a paragraph 
right so you mind if you set the width of paragraph to 100 percent and height is going to be inherited inherit the height inherit means whatever the parent has i'm going to have the same height so just for checking the alignment i'll say background is equal to hash so i'll use any background because i just have to check the alignment so i don't have to use it mm, all right or we can say red so background is red all right so it should come left aside has a p or right aside no we have gone to right aside so right aside has a p so why am i telling left aside all right so i will use uh, instead of left i will use r i g h r i g s t is the right aside that has a paragraph all right and you mind if you style my right aside all right and what you got to do is style the p tag which is the paragraph tag tag inside it all right let me say 400 pixels is the width now you can see that it has taken inherit is not taken here so i will use minimum height then 200 pixels minimum height is used now you can see absolutely all right so we don't have any problem in here so we can now use our login or we can style the login right accordingly right here okay is that clear fine uh, so let me go for a background which is very light rather so i'll use a lighter background now you can see that a lighter background is used you can go more light if you want all right or let me choose color so let me go for a color chooser right here and let me go to this hsv and rg b so i'll choose blue i'll go very light towards the bluer side very light now you can see this is here and i'll choose border also border is going to be one pixels solid hash and we have to choose the color again so i will choose the color chooser rather so just scroll top choose color chooser and go a bit darker than what your background is now you can see now it is my login uh, panel which is basically where I, I will reside my input controls right maybe 260 would suffice yeah fine 260 looks much better and we have this lock also here so let me quickly go and design it here right so i'll design it like this i'll say table and i will close down the table right here right and i'll say that please give cell cell space spacing of five pixels and cell padding of five pixels right to my table and i will go with a table row and i'll go with the table division and another table division so what is wrong with this table t-a-b-l-e cell spacing is equal to five and i don't know something is wrong here let me go ahead and make it so i'll say table is there anything wrong i'll close so it's showing me an error right here i don't know all right so ignore this so i'll go ahead and say cell spacing and i'll just control that it's absolutely all right so it does not have any problem at all so i will have to disable html error checking for this all right and i'll say login it is going to be student login right? so for example it's student login now we are getting student login here so why are we getting two paragraphs it's it looks like we're getting two paragraphs in here 
I don't know, inside table we have a paragraph. Why would you do this? Okay, let me just take this paragraph tag away. Uh, let me just have table. Now we have only table. So instead of styling the paragraph, I'll say I want to style the table. So it's going to be one and the same thing. Now, we clearly see that we have been able to uh, style uh, the table right here. Okay. And now I'll go back and say that student login. And here I'm going to display my messages. Right. So you know that. Fine. And uh, I will use my message here. Right. So I can use. I'll do something like this. User users or I can declare it in scriptlets first All right so model dot user so I'll say user user is equal to new uh, users so that is something that we can do right here and pass right here I can pass user dot so I can say get message right so this is what we will be using to display message and style color red right so this is done fine so now this part is done and this I will keep an h4 block all right so this is what I will keep in h4 block student login so now my first TD is ready now I'll go with another table row with two table divisions two table cells rather <coughs> right and I'll do the same enter your user name and I'll say input type text and I'll say value not the value I'll say name is equal to txt uh, username <coughs> right so I'll keep this u capital right okay so I'll copy this and paste it back enter your password input type password txt password again another so I will use it here remember remember me input type submit <coughs> and value is equal to log in so let me see right uh, so it has a little i mean the line of uh, the line height is too much here so i'll try and reduce the line height perhaps i will just reduce this minimum height of this table right you can see in the moment you reduce minimum height of the table everything falls uh, correctly now what I do here instead of that I'll do padding of 10 pixels all right so padding of 10 pixels is good and I'll say I want to give a line height of 30 pixels a line height means wow, what is the distance between the first line and the second line that's what I mean by a line height right all right now since everything seems to be happening nicely and correctly Alright, and let me do this right here. Remember me, right, uh, is going to take, uh, let's say about, um, okay, I'll not use remember me right here. Okay, I will use another table row then to justify uh, this remember me. So I'll say input type checkbox all right and I'll say name is equal to txt remember right and here what I do I'll not do anything just use the button all right so this is your login button and this is going to be my remember me and everything is set up right so let me go and style it and let me have common class names here so I'll say class is equal to input right so that I can style them or you can call them directly there's no need to have input so I can say that inside table now you can clearly go and say register article inside table all right what I want to do is the following I want to target all the input types and say your width is going to be hundred 
person take all the available width now you can see all the available width is taken by inputs and then I say no 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 because it's going to take you can see button is taking and this remember me is taking I don't want that so that's why I said we will rather go for a class so I call this as class input and call this as class input only two inputs so I'll target only two so I'll say dot input why dot because it's a class that I'm target now you can see it's only applied to input type text right and I'll say height is equal to 30 pixels right so I'll use 30 pixels height here right now you can see that 30 pixels height is used and what I will do to this login right I will just give it a class I'll say class is equal to btn login hey your class name is going to be btn login so I'll go ahead and say dot btn login directly I'll say float so I will say float towards right now the button will flow towards this side which is the right hand side why doesn't it okay class is equal to btn login name is equal to txt remember so I don't have to give it name why would you give it a name okay I'm doing it wrong so class is equal to btn login which is not this class I have to set it here btn log is underneath now you can see it's floating towards left to right now what we can do uh, just in case you are wondering what we can do different with this today is I can say hey I want my background of this to be RGBA right A is the extra percentage that we apply right and I can apply some extra percentage for example if I say 0 0 0 and a 0 and I can apply 0.6 percent of it right now you can see okay I'll have to terminate it right so this is how we apply and now we can apply different techniques as well all right RGB means you have to apply three colors why have I applied four I have no idea right so my mistake RGB means only three colors R G and B red green and uh, blue right so that's why we had an error now you can see that you are applying six percent of zero zero and uh, zero so th this is this is what you can do in RGBA and you can even specify and the percentage also for example I don't want 0.6 I want point 0.1 now you can see point 0.1 percent looks something like this I'll show you it'll look more beautiful if you just set border to none and then take a look at this right so now border has been set to none you can take a look at this right it has some different properties now right and now what you can do you can even set box shadow right so I've shown you box shadow as well right in the previous lecture I've shown you transitions I've shown you animations and whatnot right but yeah the most important thing is uh, that we can set all of them here because we can apply them in live projects right we need to apply every single knowledge that we are having so that we don't forget that right in live projects so that is that's the best thing about uh, you know uh, you know doing live projects right uh, so let me just go when once I have gotten the rid once I have got rid of browser so once there is no browser uh, right I can apply the following tricks right and one of the major tricks is going to be the box shadow right mm, and we can apply text shadow as well because text effects are also there we can apply text shadow as well because uh, that's also going to be there right and box shadow is also there yeah we have that because there are two kind of shadows one is box shadow and another is uh, text shadow right uh, and we have uh, you know, we can say uh, many many different things wherein we deal with uh, multiple things right uh, so let me quickly go and apply um, a gradient yeah you can apply gradient you can apply linear gradient right uh, you can apply radial gradient right so I've shown you I suppose if I'm not wrong right maybe in video number seven or maybe in video number eight we already learn linear gradient and and uh, text gradients and many many things right even we have learned how to import fonts right so but but then HTML has nothing to do uh, with this I'm just trying to make it more decorative so that 
uh, you know mm, uh, you just love handling this the more beautiful you make uh, right the more uh, you know professional it becomes finally right professional as in anti hackable anti this anti this right and is and everything that we have to uh, deal with right okay uh, let me go and uh, say this that i have to apply a dash web kit dash box and dash shadow so now if you want to apply a box shadow so it has to be uh, like i say one pixels one pixels right and two pixels and three pixels top left light bottom and also the color of the box shadow now you can see if I apply this on well, just about one, two, three, and four, right? So let me say it has FFF white box shadow, or let me have um, uh, let's say about black. So let me have the black box shadow. It's not coming. It should. It should have come. Hmm. Box shadow. Okay, let me have webkit dot box shadow. Okay, let me instead of this go with uh, the same RGBA. RGBA. A is the percentage, right? Uh, so RGB is red, green, and blue. You can mix all the colors to make any color, uh, right? And let me make it 110, 110, and 110 in the box shadow. Mm, and let me say 0.6. I want this to be approximately 0.6. Mm, okay. Webkit dash webkit dash box dash shadow RGBA. That's fine. 110, 110, 110, and 0.6. Yeah, we have to apply now. How much do you want? 10 pixels. 10 pixels is going to be too much. All right. Uh, so let me. Now you can see. 10 pixels is going to be too much so I will apply 1 pixels 1 pixels and 1 pixels offset you are applying now you can see it looks a bit embossed or engraved all right so let me change my background color to 10 here slightly right uh, so now let me change this 0.6 to 0.2 percent right. now you can see it looks a uh, slightly embossed right yeah, so now what are these three properties you can see if I increase one property it's going to increase from the top side now you can see it's going to be the effect right here and if I change another to 10 pixels and I keep this to one pixel you will see from the bottom side now it's creating more shadow all right and now if I keep it one pixels and create 10 pixels here top side uh, right uh, so this is just the effect that we are supplying here 0.2 is going to be more better and one pixels I forgot more four sides so all four sides are affected mm, all right so let me just change the top side to two pixels and uh, no one pixel so let me change the first one to two pixels or let me keep all one pixel so don't worry about this right okay now you can see I will just apply to 0.1 percent fine so I'll say 90 80 90 a bit lighter yeah the box shadow has gone a bit lighter comma one person now you can see it's going more lighter so I'll say 110 110 90 okay 110 Okay, fine. Point one percent is going to be lesser. I'll say point five percent. It's more, so I will say point four percent is what we are going to get settled on. Now let me go ahead and deal with uh, the background. So zero 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 is going to be this. If you want extreme, you can say two five five. Two five five means all black. Two five five, right? So you can change this background. All right, so that's not all black. Zero 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 is black. It's all white. All right, now you can see that everything is white in front of you. So it depends on what you want uh, your background to be. And there's a difference because because you are having percentage here, so which is not available in background color. Now you can see the percentage is well defined right here. 
you can choose anything right and I can even choose border as one pixels solid and I can choose uh, any color right here so let me choose uh, something pretty lighter not darker right now it looks much better now you can see a bit embossed right a bit shadow right and just let me decrease it to four percent and let me decrease shadow to three percent now it looks perfect right so now what we need to do is uh, now style uh, this login button so i'll go to btn login after floating right i'll use the same properties right here My button has same properties padding of 10 pixels is what I want my button to have now this is my login button it looks you know, slightly uh, it has that shade of white right here everything is perfect now so we don't have to worry too much about this kind of a panel all right so the only thing that I need to do is now on hover so I will say whenever you pass hover means mouse over you got to change right so i will say change the background right to hash a bit darker that's it and i will say cursor pointer right so uh, now the login panel is absolutely ready all right you can see fine so go back to login now the designing portion is done rather go with h2 tags here so i want it to be a bit bold okay I can go with H6 tags or that is much better here student login should be a bit more so let me style this H6 tag so I will say I am targeting H6 tag and I want the font dash size of H6 tag to be 24 pixels now it's coming a big bit bigger so I'll say 20 pixels fine 20 pixels is good and I will say letter spacing 1 pixels now it has taken 1 pixels of letter spacing and now we have entered the username and then we have entered the password and every single thing is set right and what I want for you is also now everything is set. Now, now let's go to users and I don't want this users to be declared here why because I have to pass my request I have to pass my response now what will I do here I'll go to my header.jsp or rather I'll go to my config.jsp so I'll open my full stack web application web pages and I'll open my config.jpages now config is already having the request config is only having the response so that's that way I don't mind right so the third thing I'll do here, I just want my users to be here also. I'll create it once for all. Users, user is equal to new user. I don't have to recreate it again and again and again. So I'll keep it ready. User subject is ready. All right. So now it is ready here. So user is accessed here. Now if you want to see that whether user is ready or not, you go to the users class and say this dot message is equal to hello because you're already displaying the message there. So you should get hello here. Yeah, you're getting hello now, right? So this portion is done. All right, so now we have to do the major portion, all right? And imagine this is not going to be as same as previous logins because we are going to apply uh, the session security. We are going to apply many, many security techniques uh, right here, right? So you need to be ready for all those techniques. And what is the final URL that you want me to have? So I'll go to config.jsp and see that my okay that my default URL is profile that is where I am going to go after login and my login URL is login so do I have profile yes I have it here profile.jsp is here so I will just use h1 tag right here all right and I will use it within p tag which is the paragraph tag all right and many of you had problems with JavaScript also in the previous class so I'm going to clear all uh, regarding JavaScript in this class as well so let me have this welcome to 
welcome to the ROF IL profile page. So that's what I can do. Welcome to profile page after the login. All right. So that thing is done. So let me quickly go and start handling the login process. Okay. I'll quickly go and open scriptlets here. I'll say user dot set username right user is already declared in config config is included in header and header is included here so that's going to be very easy for us right so i'll say user dot uh, let me say user dot set username so that's going to be request dot get parameter right and i will say txt username dot text right so same shall be done here 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 and i'll make an accounts controller objects so i will say what is the controller name accounts controller so i'll say so i'll say accounts control Accounts controller AC is equal to new accounts controller. Now it takes one parameter which is already there with you, and that is the parameter or that is the object of config. So we're passing that object of config as C, right? It is going to show you error, so don't worry about errors here uh, because it'll say that user is not defined, which already we know that that's defined, uh, right? Uh, so we'll not say text, right? We'll just say txt username okay all right fine uh, so now what I need to do here is um, txt password and txt remember I have to take all three values right so txt username txt password and txt remember all three values are taken initially right um, okay now I'll say user dot set password. Do I have remember? I don't have remember here, right? So let us go and quickly make private string remember. Right? So I'll quickly make this. And let's quickly go and make getters and setters for this. Right, since now the getters and setters are ready, I can now easily transfer the data. I can say set remember. Right, so now this part is done. So let me quickly go. We are getting an error. So I'll go to my web.config file and I'll just not want because I am still at debugging mode, so I don't want right uh, this debugging mode to disturb me right okay. okay now we're getting this error yeah we know that this error is because of some different different things one of the best things being that we have to run it on post I'll say if request if request dot get uh, method is equal to is equal to you say dot equals post right so then and only then you got to do this right so now we are done here okay make it inside right so we're done here now we should not get any error we're still getting an error set password is not there so set password has p capital all right, so now we are running. This is post. So post is not happening because we don't have a form. So we will quickly go and keep this table inside form. So I'll say form action. So this time the action is going to be self action and method as usual is going to be post. By default it is get. So that's why we are using post explicitly mentioning uh, that the form method is going to be post. Now let me go ahead save it now you can see it's okay now it's working fine now right now you might have many questions in your mind that how are we going to tackle the encrypted password because the password is already encrypted that we are checking right so how do you tackle that so i'll tell you how do you tackle 
that as well. So now I will go to the accounts controller. Rest has to be done. Here, so accounts controller is ready for me. So I will say public wide login. So first, first things first, I'll check whether everything is coming here or not. So I will do a system.out.println and so I will say user dot get username plus I will say user dot get password and plus I will print user dot get remember. I need to see all three things. So now I'll go to output glass fish, clear the console, go back to the site and just type username and password and say login so you should be able to get it and now you're not getting it why because you still have to call it right so I'll say ac dot login so I'll call this now this is done so I'll refresh and go back to my output and we are getting Fahim password is password and null here we're getting null what if I check it will I still get null no, then I'm getting on, right? So that means once I'm clicking remember me, I'm getting on. Once I'm not clicking remember me, I'm getting null, right? So why don't I do something more professionally here? Why don't I say that, hey, my, I have this remember me, but there's no comparison between on and null. So why don't I make it something like this on and off, right? Uh, so that's what I can uh, do here so I can say this dot remember by default is going to be right it's going to be off by default right so I'll supply small off right so now let me go and try this right let me see what are we getting we are getting on this time uh, but yeah if I set it off so we should get null. No, we're still getting null. Yeah, yeah, we know that, we know that. So this is not going to work because this is happening on post. Sorry, my mistake. So because this is happening on post, we can handle it. We'll handle it here, no problem. So now we have everything here, right? That is the magic of object-oriented programming. Now you got to do everything in this class. Everything else is done. The first thing I must tell you that you have to do is do JavaScript validation because those who had problems in the previous class will not have problem in this class, right? So what we are going to do, we are today going to complete uh, that or we are going to completely have a look at our JavaScript validations, right? And why do I require, I told you that JavaScript is not always going to be, uh, you know, secure. JavaScript is not always secure, right? So now I say, hey, I don't want to submit because now it is not Ajax. I have not used JavaScript anywhere. It's just post happening. You can see the form is submitted, post is happening, form is submitted, post is happening. Now, how do you stop form submission here? That is the first question. How do you stop form submission? I have to stop it, right or wrong? Yeah, I have to stop it. Now, what I do, I will give this, I'll go to this btn login, right? And simply take this btn login to my JavaScript file, which is accounts.js, right? So I'll just take it here. I'll say, hey, whenever dot btn login is clicked, all right, right, so what do you want? I want a function, and I'll just expand this function, and I'll say, hey, please alert, just to check with if everything is working, fine or not, right? So let me check it. Oh, -ho, function has parenthesis, okay? Fine now, so let me check. Okay, now if I click, no, we're not getting it. So btn login dot click. So let me have it once again. All right, so I will say dollar dot btn login dot click function. Please alert. Or maybe it's cached, who knows? So I have no idea. Let me just refresh it. Okay, so we're not having it. Let me clear history. Get rid of the history. 
once ST is cleared you will be able to see a different thing today still we're not having it right uh, why don't we have it okay let me terminate it maybe okay let me try now let me do this let me say on on click alert All right just go with alert on click on click alert is happening right but why isn't this happening class btn login let me say id is also btn login and now i go to accounts.js so whenever a hash let me have hash here whenever btn login is clicked i want alert isn't it simple Okay, now we're not getting it. Okay, maybe, I don't know, because of certain reasons, right? Do I have BTN login somewhere else? Check availability. Every single thing is here, so I have it here. BTN login dot click function should give me an alert. Okay, uh, maybe we have not included jQuery here, but jQuery is already included. Why not? We included jQuery in the header section, right? If I'm not wrong. Okay, let me do this. I'll make this a function. I'll say, hey, you are going to be a function login, right? Now alert. So here what I do, instead of id, I will say on, click, you go and see Java script right login right go to javascript login function right so that we can try now now it's not happening javascript login if i go to accounts.js so it is my login function it's a javascript function and i do alert here something wrong maybe javascript is not included in the file who knows function login ok let me see or let me return false here ok so I will say java javascript login alright so now it should work still not working view page source and we have have we included it no my god it's not included here how is it possible the jquery file is not included right so i'll go here inside the footer maybe we included it last time inside the footer no we haven't all right so let me go underneath the footer or maybe on top of the footer so let me say i need this file right which is script type is equal to text slash javascript and hyperlink reference of this file is going to be source source is going to be you need to go in the js folder and find account.js and this is going to be my script function all right all right now the script file is also included now then everything should work right so i was just trying something else right okay and now let me see whether the script file is included or not i'll go to page source account.js yeah account.js is now included now i can easily go and say that on click go and show me javascript login right fine it should come now your yeah, alert is coming now no need to have this on click because our mistake was that we were not including the file. So let me include the file and let me control Z, 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 Okay, now, btn login, which is class now, class btn login dot click function will give us alert. So that's it. Now it is giving alert, but it's not stopping form submission. Is it stopping form submission? To stop form submission, I'll say return false. Right? So I'll say return false. So what this does, 
is stop form submission. So form will not be submitted unless you return true now. I don't need to do this alert, right? Now what I will do right here, I will use mat, all right? So that's the best thing that I can do here, right? Get the value. So I'll say var username is equal to dollar hash txt username dot 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 val so get txt username dot val I'll not get val just keep txt username this is the different thing that we'll be doing today so, and I'll say var password you're getting all the properties here so you're just linking uh, this txt password and username uh, with this variable username and password why I'll just tell you now you have to disappear me because uh, dogs have started barking and they have stopped up barking maybe okay now password all right so we can alert the username and password we can go step by step it's always essential to go step by step and we are getting object here that's absolutely right now if in order to get the username value i'll say username dot val and i'll say password dot val all right so that's much better now I'll say please give me the username and password val. Now you can get I am getting nan. Why are we getting nan? What is the problem? TXT password and TXT. I don't know. I need to go and check the spelling. Alright. Okay. TXT. Okay. It has no ID. It has name. So I'll have to give an ID is equal to TXT username. And here as well, ID is equal to txt pass. You can call by name as well, but yeah, since we are more fond of calling by ID, so that's why. Right, so now let me go ahead and say, show me you're getting Fahim and you're getting undefined. Now one thing is coming defined, another is coming undefined because password P is capital, right? So now let me try again. See, this is the benefit of doing step-by-step -step checking. Fahim and password getting both now right so now i will say if hey wait a second if username dot val right dot match right if it matches right i, I already shown you dot match right so if it matches because you're taking a username now right so i will say if username dot val or if it does not match with the pattern that I am about to draw. And the pattern starts with the slash, right? And it starts with the not. And then you have to mention what you have to accept. I'll say I'm accepting capital A to Z. I am accepting small A to Z. Whatever you have written uh, in the registration should follow this, right? And I'm accepting small A to Z. And I am accepting, uh, it was 3 to 20 in registration field, I suppose, yeah. I am accepting 3 to uh, 20. So this is what my pattern is going to be. And pattern should match. I repeat, pattern should match the username pattern in the back end as well. All right, for that, it would not be bad if I go to essentials and validation.java. And here I can simply check the username pattern 3 to 20. And we are also accepting these things, right? Space is not accepted. So this is what we are accepting without spaces here I repeat we are accepting um, this small a to z capital a to z and 3 to 30 right and I will end the expression with dollar sign right and I will say at the end of the day right after the first brace is over it is going to be an insensitive case and I will close it down now let us do this return false right and before returning false uh what i need to do is i need to print my message here all right and i just give this td an id i'll say td message you can give this an id so there's no problem in giving this an id okay so now i've given this an id so i will say dollar hash td message dot html or you can say dot text right please write a valid user name 
right so this thing is done and if you want to please focus as well right so I'll show you that also so please write a valid first name I write valid so it's gone all right uh, so now uh, if you want to please focus as well now because already linked we have already linked hash txt to username and password you can simply say user name dot focus right you don't have to call it again txt right so already linked that's why I said we're not going to take value here if we take value here then we cannot do this username dot focus then I had to do dollar txt username dot focus right so that's what we are doing it right so now in case I have not written username I get this please enter a valid and the focus is automatically moved and also what I said username dot css you can set border right property and you can set it to one pixels solid red right so this is what you can do change the background change the border property it all depends on you now you have changed the border property right here maybe you can increase three pixels right uh, you mind if I just get rid of the outline here just wait a second uh, I will say btn login right here and we have this input so I will say outline none I don't want any outline of my input type text so that thing is done now let's go and refresh and now you can see pure border coming uh, I'll take it to one pixels back now you'll say please enter a valid username focus is there and the border color is as well as both the things are there now I'll say return false and I'll say password dot val does not match and now it depends on what you're going to take in password maybe you'll take dot you'll take underscore all right you'll take dash right you'll take average you'll take ampersand it depends on what you're going to take in password so as a please write a valid password right and you will say I want my uh, property to be restored back whatever was the earlier property of my border now I'll say earlier it was let's let me inspect element now you can see that the border pr property earlier was uh, this border yeah it's here right so I re restore this border property back right so the username has to be restored back to its old state which is this right okay so I'll just restore it right and I'll no no I'll just restore the complete border right here okay mm, right or else you can change only the border color so I say I want to change only the border color All right so that is also possible so I want to change only the border color and I don't want to change anything else so that thing is also done so for example now hey please uh, hey please write a valid username I write something invalid right so I'll say please write a valid so now if I write valid now I get please write a valid password now you can see that when I get please write a valid password it's being restored the bar border property is being restored to the original or the previous state here but wait a second right here now I have to turn the border here so I'll say hey now the border of password is going to change not the username right and the focus is going to be on password right and that's it it's very simple now let's try from the beginning Please write a valid username. I write something that I should not write. Please write. I am not hitting login button. Look where my cursor. I am hitting enter. So enter is not allowing me to go to this line unless I complete it right. Now this way enter is also going to work. If I write Fahim, hit the enter key, I go automatically to the next field which is please write a valid password. And now if I write a valid password, I hit the enter key. Now I submit my request back to right the web server right so now this is how it goes because you had to stop initially you had to stop form submission right you had to stop automatic form submission and why do we do I told you that there are many bots out in the market so they'll keep your server busy you don't want to keep your server busy right just by you know doing something invalid right or just by taking invalid data so why don't you validate it in the browser from the browser you're validating it from the browser I'll show you a very simple example for example if this is a function 
let's say the function name here is uh, let's say function login right so this is what they do now this is function login all right and what I do I call this function login I'll go here and I call this function login I'll say hey wait a second I have a function login I'll say hey on click you mind if you go to JavaScript right and take input from login function now you're going to login function right so this is also going to work so I go to login function but here you can see the form is submitting you clearly see the form is getting submitted here right you can clearly see it's coming it's going you can see the red border is coming yeah it's immediately going because the form is getting submitted now in order to stop form submission I'll say return I'll say return login so unless now this login function returns true form will not be submitted now you can see please enter a valid username and say Fahim please enter a valid password now form is submitted right now you can say right now the form is submitted so now I hope uh, you have understood this now why do we require server side validation if this validation is already with us so I'll right click and go to inspect element I'll say oh you're validating my out input so I'll say I'll delete this I'll say on click nothing is going to happen right I will just write anything right for example let's say for example we are doing this mm, uh, uh, let's say about someone is trying injection someone is trying uh, let's say about uh, someone is trying uh, HTML injection all right uh, for example if I s do this I'll say out dot print all right user dot get user name so that's what we are doing here for example just for security reasons right so now you can see all right so now I cannot enter this input or I cannot say script right I cannot do a JavaScript injection here close down the script from both sides and say alert right so I cannot do this why because I have my validation but the hacker will say hey to help with your validation right I'll just delete whatever because everything is happening from the browser browser is in front of you JavaScript is downloaded to the browser now he has deleted everything he says okay now let me see what you can do right okay so let me go ahead and see right so now you can see there's no validation btn login has absolutely no validation at all so now I can take anything that I want to take what happened okay I am doing something wrong here all right so I'll just go to my btn maybe it's being cached so it's because of caching and that is happening so let me just again get rid of this function on click all right now it does it's not there it does not exist now I'll write script and okay I still get basically because of caching so it's being cached I suppose if I say Fahim valid password password so I get this Fahim all right so it's because of caching what is happening but yeah your user can simply go and inspect the element and say that I don't need return of login I can say <coughs> JavaScript return nothing but alert right so I want alert to happen on JavaScript now if I go you can see alert is happening now it has taken the script now you can see I can see I want <coughs> alert to happen on click right and I want something like this hacked now once once you click on login you get this right uh, or maybe I have missed something yeah I just missed this so h-a-c-k-e-d hacked and I have to close this right and I will say single quotes close h-a-c-k-e-d hacked because on click is taking double quotes so I'll have to use uh, just a moment I'll have to use single quotes right here just a moment just a moment anyways you have seen that JavaScript in from the browser is not secure so I'll say 
alert a l e r t and i will say hacked so we are alerting this so this time it should come yeah we're getting this hacked so they can bypass javascript and why are we using javascript so that all those bots should not disturb our server <coughs> right and you can clearly see uh, that that's why we use front end validation as a javascript validation and back end as well please write a valid username so let me just refresh it so please write a valid username so i write a valid username please write a valid password now both are valid boom so it's submitted to the server right so let me take a look at timings it's already been past one hour my god yeah at times styling takes a bit more time now i want you to be in sync with me tomorrow we are going to start the most important part right and then the first time profile part is going to be equally more important and till then i wish you all the best do practice very hard so i'll spend my time in making dog silent and you spend your time in making the website bye bye take care